about the way that art can kind of take these big global statistics numbers, you know, 10,000 people died in the siege of Sarajevo. How do you translate that into an experience that an audience can connect with in a more personal, more empathetic way, for example? So my name's Paul Lowe. I'm a reader in documentary photography here at the London College of Communication. Uh, my background is as, a, as a photojournalist, a practitioner, which I did from sort of the late 80s until the 2000s. But then I kind of shifted into the academy. I mean, my first degree was in history, so I always thought of myself as a kind of, you know, living historian, if, as it were, on the cold face of history. A lot of what I tried to do is deal with the kind of ethical and uh, the political questions around the, re the representation of conflict in particular, whether it's through photography or other forms of visual culture, but really trying to bridge the gap between practice and, and theory. As a photographer, I mostly covered conflict. Uh, I didn't set out to be a war photographer. It's just that, you know, that period from sort of the late 80s into the 90s, uh, you know, my first big story was the fall of the Berlin Wall and, you know, at the time it felt like it was this kind of Francis Fukuyama's end of history and it was going to be this wonderful world of, you know, sweetness and light and brotherhood and unity in the end of the Cold War. Of course, that's not what happened. In fact, it, it, you know, the number of, of particularly small-scale intense conflicts increased in, in that period. So what I was really interested in as a, as a photographer was this sense of what happens to ordinary people in these extraordinary situations and conflict obviously is one of the most extraordinary situations. So you know, first hand I experienced that, I photographed that, I documented that. It did raise a lot of ethical problems for me as well about the process of representation, how you know, uh, journalists in the field work with the people they're, they're, they're representing and all the complexities that that engages in. So that's been the sort of, that was the starting of my kind of research interest in, in that area. And it's broadened out now into a broader sense of, of visual culture and conflict and representation of that, whether it's in art and, and fine art as well as in photography. For me, what's been really interesting over the last couple of years, I've been working with uh, King's College War Studies Department and London School of Economics on a two-year HRC-funded research project looking at the, the, what, what reconciliation means in post-conflict society. And what we've been doing, which has been very exciting, is working with artists, uh, commissioning new work, which is something a, a first for the HRC, um, uh, around this theme. So we have, we've been working with the Historical Museum uh, of Bosnia-Herzegovina, which is based in Sarajevo. So we've been working with them over the last two years on a series of artistic interventions into their collection. They have a very interesting collection of, of material objects in the archive and from the, the, the last conflict in the 90s. So we've been commissioning artists to make specific interventions into that kind of space and then present the work in exhibition in other public spaces and then evaluating that whole process to see what we can learn from that about the role of the arts in, in these kind of situations. And we've got some really interesting results out of that about the way that art can kind of take these big global statistics numbers, you know, 10,000 people died in the siege of Sarajevo. How do you translate that into an experience that an audience can connect with in a more personal, more empathetic way, for example? So one of the other big areas that I've been working on a lot is, is perpetrator photography and, and the role of the perpetrator, particularly uh, during the Second World War. As part of that research, I did some really interesting uh, archival research at the Imperial War Museum on the liberation of Bergen-Belsen uh, by British forces in 1945. And part of that was a set of photographs of the camp guards um, when they were arrested by the British soldiers. And they're very strange pictures. There's a, a, very, a very interesting and, I suppose, chilling portrait of the commander of the camp and one of the women guards standing there next to each other it looks like a family photograph. It looks like a, a father and his daughter standing in front of their garden, but it's not. How do you then respond to that? You know, the portrait as a format invites you to have some kind of empathy, some kind of connection with the person you're looking at, but when that person is a convicted war criminal who was executed for genocide, how do you then feel? How does that response to change? I mean, I feel really fortunate to be here at LCC because there's a whole group of us, you know, um, at this institution working on a whole set of similar issues around this sort of ideas of visible justice. And a lot of us are working on this problematic issue of how do you represent something which is not actually visible. So things like a lot, a lot of war crimes and, and, and um, crimes against humanity today happen in places you can't get to, or they're happening in, in the cyber infrastructure, they're happening, they're being carried out by state level institutions where you can't physically get access. So I feel really fortunate that we've got, I think, you know, probably one of the best collections of, of artists and researchers, um, arguably almost anywhere, working on those sort of questions together. I've been very lucky actually because I've, you know, I suppose sort of nurtured a cohort of students who've come out of my MA, uh, particularly the online MA, to go on to PhD studies. So I've currently got three PhD students who've, who've kind of grown up with me as it were. I mean, you know, it's taken me outside of my comfort zone at times, but in a way it has to because I think that's one of the great things about being a supervisor is, you know, you're, you, you do have a lot of knowledge, you have a lot of understanding of your own field, but you've also, a lot of these sort of things that are quite, um, 
you know, the, the sort of skills you've got as a supervisor are helping them guide their research and, and you don't necessarily need to be an absolute expert in the particular thing that they're working on. It's more giving them a sense of the, br the bigger picture of how their research fits into that larger world and how they can make their own little, you know, unique contribution to knowledge within that. Yeah, I think I'm a, I kind of really enjoy working with other people. Um, I enjoy making things happen. I do a lot of, you know, I try to make a lot of events happen like symposiums and conferences and there's a great feeling to kind of being in a room and watching all these people interact with each other and talking, you know, at a high level and knowing that you're kind of the, you know, one of the people that made that happen and put that together. Because I think art is, art and design and, and, and journalism, they are spaces that can allow all these different voices to come together and act as a kind of, a, a, act as a kind of fulcrum or focal, focal point for that. So in terms of me, it, you know, it's really important to work in an interdisciplinary way, to work with voices from different spaces and to try to, as much as I can, help those different uh, discourses and those different disciplines understand how visual culture and particularly photography can be used as much more than just kind of window dressing, much more as actually a central part of the, of the analytical process rather than just simply descriptive, you know, visual addendum to the, to the main argument.